Rick Sutton with Game Time, and I'm here with Chief of Staff Rock Johnson of the Jim, Jim Brown. Brown Foundation I Can for Social Change. And Rock, I mean, this is a big occasion here today. We're at Jim's house. I mean, I see a lot of the support coming in from players, athletes, families. And what does it mean to you today, I mean, to come out? And, and you've been a big part of this for quite a bit of time. I mean, for one, to understand the American Foundation for Social Change, you have to understand that it's dealing with the human instinct of an individual. Uh, I once was a predator on these streets. Um, I spent 17 years incarcerated. My last eight years down, I was locked up in the hole. Uh, I lost my daughter in a violent death. I uh, got shot 11 times since I've been out. But to be able to be still part of a foundation who believed in me, a man who believed in me, Jim Brown, who gave me a chance in life, it allowed me to create a basketball component of American Foundation. And with that basketball component, it allowed me to really um, get kids opportunities. I'm talking about kids that's not, not on anyone's radar. Kids never been ranked, never had a star. In today's society, them stars mean a lot. Kids get on the internet all the time to see where they rank at, see where they where they might be going. And most of the kids I deal with that come through American basketball are kids whose families cannot afford AAU the price of AAU teams. They can't. Um, they have may have attitude. Go to a small school. They're not the caliber person that you will think, typically, typically think that's the person they want. So I go after the kids no one wants, no one looks at until I get them. And as always, once I get them and create them, become the the positive monsters, the positive athletes that I believe they got within themselves, you know, I, and then other people try to come and get them from, from behind. But in general, I've been doing this since 1988. I got over 130, 140 kids in college. Um, I presently have six freshmen, all enrolled in school. Uh, four of them will be here today. Uh, one at DePaul University, Chris Faber. Um, Justin Hayes at SMU, uh, Larry Anderson at Long Beach State, Ronald Armstead at LMU, um, Antonio Weary at Central Michigan, and Shane, Big Shane, he's like an like adopted nephew of mine, he's at Alabama a &M. And to be able to have that and have four freshmen from last year would be sophomores. I got nine um, juniors in Division I school presently right now and seven seniors. You know, DeAndre Bell, who goes to Georgia Tech, who made honor roll three years straight. The honor roll at Georgia Tech. Right. And when I first got him five years ago, he was a kid, only one school looked at, Santa Clara. And I told him, come up under my wing and I get more schools to look at you. And it was a fight between UCLA, Georgia Tech, Georgetown, and Michigan State. And Georgia Tech won out. Not only did they get an athlete, they got a student athlete. Okay. I mean, Jim, this must be an exciting day you know, to see the new athletes, the families, all the support all around the country, I understand, that you're getting uh, the results have been outstanding. <laughs> well, today is a great day because uh, we do have the parents, we have the youngsters, and we have uh, a young man that I'm a surrogate father to, Mr. Rudolph Johnson, who created this concept. And he has a background of crime and incarceration, but yet decided to change his life. And I want to change his life because help change lives in the community. So today is like a day of celebration. It doesn't have anything to do with me. And I'm just very proud because he is the architect of uh, all of this. And uh, we have all kinds of people here. And we have a chain from the parents on down to the kids. And that's what you really want. Now, you're better than well, for some people out there, you know, for football, but this has nothing to do with football. Where do you see this program going in the next 10 years? I think that uh, people like yourself, the general public gets a chance to know what these kids are really doing to make change in this country. It will explode. I think we'll be in every school, uh, every prison, every juvenile facility, and every community because it brings the people self-esteem and they, they become a law abider, they feel good and they make a contribution back to their own communities. And once those communities are safe and our schools are upgraded and people feel good about themselves, it will be a, a way to make the great change that we need to make. And there's really no other way to do it. Now, I understand from hearing some conversations that you're working with a couple of universities out there. What are you offering these universities on programming? 
Well, the base of American is our life management skills curriculum. It teaches a person how to take responsibility for themselves. That's one thing that does not happen. Then you can help them. So that curriculum is being used by Texas Southern University. We've trained a lot of veterans to be our facilitators, and we are uh, addressing the youngsters that are now coming from high school into their freshman year at Texas Southern. And we have a summer academy that they can go into, and that academy will teach them the things that they will know to make that transition. And so they realized that there was one thing missing, which was our life management skills curriculum. So with Mr. Big George Foreman and Mr. Richard Johnson, Big George is a great man, uh, we were able to marry our program with theirs, and we had our first graduation to a week ago that has been highly successful. The aim is to bring their graduation rate up, to keep these kids in school for four years, let them graduate, and have a real benefit of a four-year education. But the economic part of it is, is that when you bring their graduation rate up, the school can then get more money from the state to help improve you know, it, it, its curriculum. Well, it's essential to get them at an early age. What age group are you like kind of targeting to try to get the help in? Well, when you when you when you're looking at, at Texas Southern that situation, we're just looking at the uh, you know the, the uh, seniors in high school. But when you deal with the overall concept of where I can, we're looking at some individuals that are 30 to 40 years old that the gang leaders that control these communities and they control these kids. See, if you don't get these gangs and these people with influence and negative influence to turn their lives around, you can't get to the kids. The, the misunderstanding and the theory is that, oh, you get them young, you get them young and oh, These kids come from a father, come from a mother, what is their situation? And how are you going to be able to supply them with a holistic caring system but if you can get these parents that are disenfranchised to take a second look, then they will influence the youngsters. So I'm, I'm glad to say that because the misunderstanding is that, oh, we go get the young one. No, we want those who have babies to teach them the right things instead of the wrong things, even though they might be divorced or they might be separated from the mother. Now the parents obviously see the results. I mean, do they unite together? Is it a little stronger from the first 10 years to now? Oh yeah, what's happening today uh, up here, a great example of uh, that happening. Uh, the big rock is uh, his extended family up here today, you know, his fathers, you know, mothers, the kids that are going to school, the kids that are already in school, and American members. So it's, uh, to me, today represents the future. Well, Jim, it's been great talking to you, man, today. I mean, just seeing all the, the love, the kids, the family. And, matter of fact, I was impressed with your two little ones. I mean, when we walked in, I mean, they had a lot of character. <laughs> yeah, my baby was something else. They got the best of my age. When you get old, you know how to treat them. <laughs> they have freedom of expression, freedom of movement, and uh, they take advantage of it. We swim, you all the way. We swim probably three times a day. And they know that Monique, their mother, and I love them to death. And uh, they love their exercise, their intelligence, they love school. So I'm glad you picked up on it. You know? Oh, I'm very proud of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to show you how diverse this group is. What's the Andrea? Right here. Georgia Tech, senior, on the road three times. He just on the road three times. Ray Reese, University of Tulsa, been a senior this year. Had his struggles, never gave up. When he got in trouble, or when he had troubles with his trying to focus, he'd call me. Still there, finna graduate on time. Larry is now a freshman, president of freshman at Long Beach State. Worked really hard. Had to go to prep school for a year and worked really hard, get his grades together.